Hello there, this is Dana R. Carey, author, speaker, survivor, and certified trauma recovery coach from DanaRCarey.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to talk about the eight top traits vital for trauma recovery, and this is for you to experience emotional support success. And oftentimes, when we are in the midst of trying to heal from abuse, and various types of traumas, we do seek professional help. And it could be a different experience for each person because we are so unique, our backgrounds are different, our interests are different, and what is aligned to us, our core values and how we feel about healing can be very, very different. And so understand right out of the gate that there is not just one way to heal, there are so many different avenues to ponder and to brainstorm and consider. So this video is actually not only beneficial for someone who is an abuse and or trauma survivor, but also this is an excellent educational video for someone who is a licensed therapist, social worker, psychologist, and or certified trauma recovery coach. Along your healing journey, you may seek emotional support. It could be with a licensed therapist, a social worker, a psychologist, or a certified trauma recovery coach. It may involve a traditional approach or it may involve something that is more into holistic modalities or maybe you have an open mind and you consider both. Um, I personally have experienced both. So in my lifetime, I have been working in my past with licensed therapists, social workers, psychologists, and also certified trauma recovery coaches. Now, just taking the place of the survivor. So if I step into, hey, I'm the survivor now, and I'm going to share what worked for me. In all honesty, and being very authentic and very real, for me, what really was the best match, the best fit, was working with a certified trauma recovery coach. Now, they are different than a licensed therapist or psychologist. Um, a certified trauma recovery coach is someone who's more so your mentor, your guide. It's someone who is like your equal. Um, sometimes when it comes to a psychologist or a social worker or a licensed counselor or therapist, they may seem like they're kind of like higher up above you. You may not feel like they're your equal, but we can understand that this video and the message and content involved with it really does align with all types of emotional support for your mental health. So try to keep an open mind and maybe you can even end up um, learning something new today that could be a part of implementing new tools and new various forms of emotional support so you can have success in your healing journey. So it is really important that whoever you do choose to work with, whoever it may be, that they are trauma informed, they are educated, they have professional and educational experience in both abuse and trauma, as well as they have personal experience and professional experience in the specific types of trauma and abuse that you have suffered. And I'm going to just give an example. About four to five years ago, when I had first gone no contact with my narcissistic mother and toxic siblings, I did seek traditional therapy. It was basically talk therapy. And after three months, I discovered and was quite disappointed that my therapist was not educated, nor experienced, nor trained in narcissistic personality disorder, narcissistic abuse, and anything pertaining to that topic, such as what is hoovering? What is gaslighting? What are smear campaigns? What's retaliation? And, and what's all involved with going no contact or gray rock? And so due to the therapist not having educational knowledge and a sensitivity to the topic of narcissistic personality disorder and my being the daughter of a narcissist, it was very, very clear that she was not an ideal fit for me. And, and of course, you know, I went onward and I'm really grateful for the International Association of Trauma Recovery Coaching because they give safe space 
for all trauma survivors, including their own students. And when I was in school last year, it felt like I was coming home to my soul, coming home to my inner child. I felt heard. I felt seen. I felt valued and appreciated and understood, and they validated me. And it was the most breathtaking, um, just a breath of fresh air to have someone who is coaching me and working with me and giving me sacred space to just be real, be myself, and share my own past abuse history. And so I don't know where you are along your emotional recovery. Perhaps you're in the very beginning stages, or maybe you haven't really gotten started yet, or maybe you're somewhere in the midst of it. Maybe it's been five years, 10 years, or beyond. And we can understand the trauma recovery is not an overnight success. It is not something that, whoop, just like that, you're healed, you're cured. So no, it's not about getting cured. It's more about really committing to your healing journey and exploring various methods that could be a good fit for you in your mental health and in your trauma recovery. So for everyone, it's different. Next is that Perhaps you are interested in receiving emotional support to heal from perhaps it's child abuse, narcissistic abuse, sibling abuse, maybe it's domestic violence, sexual assault, toxic relationships. Perhaps you do have trauma, maybe it's PTSD or complex PTSD, depression, anxiety, and so forth, in which you really do want to find someone who is an ideal match for you. And so if you're on this journey, I congratulate you. That is the first step. You know, it takes a lot of courage. I'm going to, hey, look at this sign back here. It says, believe you can and you're halfway there. And so that's what this is all about. Believe that you can have emotional support success. Believe that you are worthy of it. At the heart and the core of having success with whoever we're working with. And it could be a wide variety of different options out there because there's countless uh, different types of licenses, certifications, and degrees. But understand that you are so worthy and valuable, and it's really important that you honor this, that you know that you are worth being healed. You are worth doing all of the work involved. And, and while, yes, it's work. Yes, it's hard work. Yes, it takes a commitment, accountability, and responsibility, and so much more. But understand that at the end of the day, your future self is going to thank you. Your future self is going to say, thank you for listening to your inner child. Thank you for exploring different holistic options. Thank you for seeking different types of therapy or coaching or counseling or even something that's a holistic modality that can really be implemented with new tools to equip you to keep moving forward in your recovery process. Next is that to start this process of healing from abuse and trauma, it can be very enlightening, freeing, liberating, it can be empowering and radically life-changing. However, it is a big step and finding the right mental health professional to be your trusted ally on your healing journey could sometimes feel overwhelming. You might think, oh my goodness, I'm not sure what I want. I'm not sure what I need. And that's why today I'm having this educational video to help you to take back control of your body, mind, and spirit to take back control of your life and your boundaries and your future and live your purpose and dreams because you do deserve happiness you do deserve to feel safe and really at the heart of healing is feeling safe being safe and that means in relationships that means in your home and that means in your trauma recovery next is that an effort to help you to find your ideal match, I am going to share the eight top traits vital for your trauma recovery. If you see me looking down, it's because I have notes. I have notes and I didn't memorize this. I'm reading from my notes and thank you for your patience and your 
you know, beautiful presence on my YouTube channel. So let's get started on the eight top traits for your trauma recovery. Number one, and this is the number one, if we look at all the eight traits, the one that I would have to put up way like high, high, high on something that is essential for you when you are working with a mental health professional, whoever it may be, is that you have good communication skills. So the number one top trait is vital for your trauma recovery is to be able to articulate your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your grief, your loss, your challenges, uh, the different experiences that you have suffered. And it doesn't necessarily mean that every time you're in a session with a counselor or a certified trauma recovery coach, that you're talking about the abuse, meaning explicit graphic details. Understand you do not have to do this at every single session. A lot of times when you're, you're in, say, a therapy session, a counseling session, you're working with a psychologist or a certified trauma recovery coach, there are so many different discussions that we talk about. It's not about just repeating and talking and talking about the actual abuse situation, about what took place. And understand, trauma is not about what's wrong with you. Trauma is about what happened to you, such as narcissistic abuse, domestic violence, sexual assaults, etc., etc. Next is that we're going to talk about communicating to your mental health professional. So while it could be daunting, it could be intimidating, I understand, you know, when we are starting emotional support in our trauma recovery. It could feel a little bit intimidating. I mean, we don't typically know this person. They're new. Uh, we're not quite sure of their style of uh, whether it's coaching, whether it's counseling. And so this could feel a bit uh, anxiety producing. So I validate that if sometimes you just feel a little bit uncertain However, communicating your needs, your emotions, and how trauma has deeply impacted your life is really crucial to share with whoever you're working with. And so understand that one of the reasons why therapy or coaching or counseling may fail is if there's a lack of clear communication. And this goes for both people. So whoever the mental health professional is, they need clear communication. And, who, and then you yourself as the patient and or client, you need clear communication. So it really is a two-way street. Next would be number two. Are you coachable and are you teachable? This is all about accountability and taking responsibility for your life. As I said in the last video that I just shared that... You are not responsible for the abuse that you suffered. And it's not about anything you said or did. It's, it's really about the perpetrator. So the perpetrator chose to abuse, period, end of the story. However, as a grown adult, each of us, including myself, are responsible for our healing journey. And it, it involves being accountable to whoever we're working with, even being accountable to ourselves, meaning I'm going to show up, I'm going to dress up, I'm going to do what I need to do to take care of me and my emotional health and my physical health, my spiritual health, and onward. And so today I have to ask you, you know, are you teachable? Are you open to getting feedback from the mental health professional? Are you open for them to give you constructive criticism. Maybe they're giving you some new ideas and tools to implement in your healing journey. And so ask yourself today, am I open to hearing this? Am I open to actually putting it into action and doing it? So it's not just hearing it, but it's also implementing it into your daily life. And one example is self-care. So self-care is a really big part of healing. It's taking care of ourselves. I feel like um, self-care has so many components to it, but I feel like it's coming home to our inner child, that inner child who was abused, that inner child who was bullied into silence, that inner child who our development as toddlers or uh, young children or even teenagers was harmed. 
you know, harmed by the parent or harmed by the sibling or harmed by someone else who abused us. And so we must understand that, no, the, the abuse is not our fault, but yes, we are responsible for our healing and that it's really important that we're accountable, we're coachable, and we're teachable. Next would be number three, committed. So I really believe this is right up there with clear communication. So being committed to yourself really comes first. Um, before you can be committed to the mental health professional, it involves you being committed to you, being committed to doing the hard work, the grief work, the trauma recovery work. And it could look different for everyone because be, there are so many different types of healing modalities. You know, there's a traditional approach. There's the more uh, non-traditional approach. There's the holistic modalities. You know, some people do very, very well looking outside the box, maybe with somatic em embodiment, uh, emotional regulation, learning how to calm their nervous system, using breathing techniques. Some people do well with like massage therapy, um, some type of energy healing, acupuncture, pet therapy, dance therapy, on and on and on it goes. Um, EM, EMDR is another one. Um, emotional freedom technique, the tapping method is another. So there's a wide range of options. And I think that's really great because then you have more choices to pick. And so consider all of your options today and please be accountable for your own self because being committed means you're going to show up to your appointments on time. You're going to show up to your coaching sessions. You're not going to cancel on a, a habitual manner. Um, people who are ready and willing to invest in their trauma recovery, they are going to be committed and it's going to be demonstrated by their actions, not just, not just their words. And so today I have to ask you, are you coachable? Are you teachable? Are you committed to your trauma recovery? If you'd like to share, please share down in the comments. Next, we're gonna talk about the next one, which is number four, and it's being crystal clear. Crystal clear is all about discernment and wisdom and knowing what's best for you. Um, so it's important that you are clear about what you would like for your emotional support. And maybe to consider like, what is possibly helpful for you and what is not helpful for you? Because, for example, let's go back to when I, four years ago, went to a traditional therapist and I realized, wow, she has no education. She's not trauma-informed and she has no experience nor any personal experience and no knowledge about narcissistic personality disorder. So for me, I realized, wow, she's not a good fit. And, and that, that, that's not like trying to like point a finger and like put her down. It's being honest. You know, it's really important that we're authentic. And part of being crystal clear about our needs is knowing what we, what we need. So I needed four years ago, an individual who gave me emotional support, who would be informed and knowledgeable about trauma, about narcissistic personality disorder, about abusive siblings, about like, what does it mean when someone's manipulating you? What does it mean when they are triangulating your relationships or they're retaliating and bullying you into silence? And so for me, it took time, you know, with all of us through our healing journey, there will be ups and downs and it's like a roller coaster. There will be times we might find someone who's not the best fit and we'll find out. It might be the first session. It might be the um, 10th session. It might be six months down the road where we get to a point where like, wow, this isn't working. I'm not healing. I actually feel like I'm going backwards, not forward. Or maybe they just don't have what you need. And so understand that your needs are important and it's important for you to even get a piece of paper, get your pen, write a list of your wants and your needs. Focus first on your needs. What do you need physically, emotionally, financially, relationally, mentally? What do you need spiritually? Because all of this is really important for you to understand before you would even decide to work with a mental health professional or a certified trauma recovery coach. 
So the one thing that is really important here, I need to get my glasses on so I could read, but something that's really important is understanding that before we work with someone, we need to know what our preference is as far as do I want to work with someone who's non-traditional? Do I want to work with someone who really focuses more so on talk therapy or cognitive therapy or so forth? Or do I want to look outside the box, say, um, EMDR, emotional freedom technique, somatic embodiment, and holistic modalities in a very natural approach? Next would be um, something really interesting that Dr. Bessel van der Kolk wrote in his book. So here's his book, The Body Keeps the Score. And let's first chat about his credentials. So Dr. Bessel van der Kolk is a trauma expert. He is a psychiatrist. He is an author, a researcher, an educator. And he is someone who really gives a lot of wisdom about what is trauma. How does it impact your life? How does it impact your future? How does it impact your uh, relationships and influence your physical and emotional health? And so he said in his book, um, The Body Keeps the Score, he said, quote unquote, drugs and talk therapy, two of the most popular approaches to mental health care are useful in the treatment of trauma, but they have limitations because they do not truly bring the person out of the trauma and into reality. And so that was in the book, The Body Keeps a Score. Uh, it was the takeaway, the analysis and the review from 2015. So although these treatment approaches that are traditional can offer temporary relief, say with our anxiety, our depression, triggers, flashbacks, insomnia, physical pain, et cetera, et cetera. We can understand that they don't address the root of the problem. And so I believe that it's really important that we do seek the root of the problem. We don't just cover it up and that we really do have an open mind to seeking solutions and answers to get emotional support that really, really focuses on the root, especially the root of the abuse and the trauma. So next would be number five, collaboration. According to Intelligent Information Management Glossary, they say collaboration is a working practice whereby individuals work together for a common purpose. And it could mean awareness, motivation, participation, reciprocity, reflection, and engagement. Next is number six, clear boundaries. And oh boy, if you haven't watched any of my other videos, I have plenty that talk about healthy, clear boundaries. So it goes well beyond mental health. It's about relationships, all relationships, your marriage, your um, intimate relationship with a boyfriend, girlfriend, or intimate partner, your family, your friends, your coworkers, online, offline, and with strangers. So we can understand that boundaries are crucial to our mental health. And boundaries are really like a hedge of protection. It's really not about anyone else. It's about us and what is, what is supporting us. And everyone is different about their boundaries, but boundaries are so important. According to goodtherapy.org, they say boundaries are limits that people set in order to create a healthy sense of personal space. So psychological limits define personal dignity and what aligns to your core values. So it's important that you know what your core values are. When you seek emotional support with a mental health professional, whoever it may be, it's imperative that you respect their boundaries and it's important that they respect your boundaries. So it really is a two-way street. Next is number seven, curiosity. While therapy is a quite different approach than certified trauma recovery coaching, the one commonality is that curiosity can show up in our sessions. So whether it's a therapy session, whether it's a coaching session, what have you, are you curious to explore a new perspective, a new healing tool, or to ask important questions? Are you curious to gain wisdom about psychological, educational information and put it into practice to enhance your trauma recovery? So this goes under psychoeducation and really taking a deep dive into, you know, what is trauma? How does it impact our bodies and minds? How does it impact our health and our emotions on a daily basis? You know, there's so much. And are we curious 
to explore something new. Number eight and the last one is courage. A significant part of the trauma recovery is having the courage to be vulnerable, to be real, to be brave, and to be authentic, to stay true to yourself, to have the courage to unpack your abuse and trauma in a safe space in a non-judgmental manner. And so Brene Brown has an inspiring quote and she says, vulnerability sounds like truth and feels like courage. Truth and courage aren't always comfortable, but they are never weakness. So today I hope that this has been educational for you. Um, at the heart of what I wanna end this message with is something really important. So whether you're working with a psychologist, a therapist, a counselor, a certified trauma recovery coach, or someone totally different, understand this. They will make you feel seen, heard, and validated when they are a good fit for you. The mental health professional who is ideal for you will give you sacred space. They'll hold space for you. And they will be there and be present and compassionate. They will listen. And that is really important. A lot of times when we are heard and we are seen and we are validated and respected, we're able to heal. We're able to move forward and heal. And so today, share with me, how are you doing on your healing journey? Have you worked with a traditional therapist, psychologist, social worker, or counselor? Have you ever explored working with a certified trauma recovery coach? If you'd like to learn about working with a certified trauma recovery coach, such as myself, go to DanaArcuri.com. Please like this video, share this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's keep the comments going down below. And thank you so much. You could visit me at DanaArcuri.com and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.